Um, I'm excited to show this. Uh, just fair warning, this is a demonstration that internally takes about an hour and 10 minutes. So I've been trimming like crazy to try to get the high level. But the good news is we had a very positive experience at our first Odyssey Symposium. And speaking to Patrick and Anthony, we, we found out what next steps would be in terms of uh, showing this in a little bit more detail at the Atlas Work Group meeting. So uh, I'm happy to show and very excited to show a very trim Cliff Notes version, if you will. And then from here, very excited about next steps. So um, for those of you who had a chance to stop by uh, at our uh, demonstration, uh, essentially this, the items that we worked on over the last um, over the last year or two were to make some features of Atlas that our institution really asked for. So they they sent around these four topics, uh, being able to upload an external cohort, uh, being able to extract data from the OMAP CDN, uh, the, their specific data types and, and formats that they wanted. So there was some work uh, around building those workflows in. And then finally, our compliance office, because data is being extracted, uh, needed to exert a level of control. Uh, so that's why we decided to integrate with our internal IRB system. So the work that we did, you know, there was there was quite a bit, but this is a good way to categorize it. So uh, as we all know, building a cohort in Atlas is very straightforward. You know, you find your clinical concepts, uh, build the set, and then use it to configure the logic for the cohort. What we needed to do was being uh, able to allow a user who might not be very familiar with a lot of the nuances around informatics uh, methodologies, but be able to use a essentially a list of patients that they might be tracking externally, right? So when you're thinking in terms of, at least for our users, they might be tracking patients that um, they have uh, on a red cap project, or they might be looking for a specific set of patients that they've accumulated over years, or in the case of our biorepository, they might have a specific set of specimens and they know the patient IDs and, and they, through user feedback, uh, told us that to recreate that using logic and rules would be very, very difficult to do. And you always are chasing you know, a way to do, uh, find those patients. So what we did was build a workflow that allowed them to download a very simple template, which I'll show you, uh, put in the MRNs, and then to make sure that it followed uh, at least the bare minimum requirements of how Atlas operates, a, a cohort start and end date. And I say Atlas as a placeholder for um, the whole cohort workflow. And then be able to upload that and then use that cohort within Atlas to characterize or in, in the case of our users, be able to extract ad additional uh, information from. So that was our upload workflow in which I'll show you. Then we had uh, the ability, we needed to be able to build the ability to extract data from Atlas uh, for specific cohorts. And for that, uh, we used the existing templates, but then created a, a, essentially a custom workflow to be able to allow a user to pick and choose the various variables that they might be interested in. And this is all driven off of the uh, vocabulary. And then from there, pick particular parameters. So. One thing to note here is that we just you know, had a, a library on the left side of the screen, which I'll show, and then essentially a shopping cart or a basket kind of functionality. So as soon as they pick the variables that they wanted to extract, they would appear. And then from there, they would be able to select additional parameters, uh, such as the type of statistics or things that they want. And um, there's some key things in there. So let me, let me take a pause here and show you what those two things look like in the system. All right, so you should be able to see our instance of Atlas. As you, it should look very familiar. It is, I believe, a version behind, um, if not more, but we, uh, this is our one of our training environments. So the upload cohort workflow, this is um, essentially allows a user to upload their cohorts, to be um, clicking new cohort, and then from in here, it provides them some instructions on what to do and the ability to download this template. When they do that, and this is going to be like a cooking show where I show you all these things, but we've uh, prepared it beforehand. This is what the template looks like. So as you can imagine, they would uh, put in their MRNs, their start dates and end dates. And like I said, this is going to be something that they've probably been following these patients for a while. So uh, this is the part where I jump to what it looks like. I, we put in, you know, just um, uh, and essentially a list of MRNs, these are all dummy MRNs, and then uh, the 
um, start date and end date. And then from there, what they would be able to do is upload it here and by picking the file, hit upload, and then that would function as a cohort that they can use to do additional analysis with. So now I'm going to jump to the extraction workflow because I'm at six minutes. So here uh, we have a whole series of um, cohorts. Uh, again, you can build these cohorts using either the existing cohort definition workflow or the upload cohort workflow. And then from here, I'm going to click download. And this is the new screen that was built. So one of the first things that we ask the user to do is either create a new basket or pre-select one that they've created in the past. This is saved to the user's profile. So I'm just going to pick a, a, a random one. Let me see if there's one. So what this does is uh, here's the basket of all the variables that in this particular case that the user wanted to download. If they want, they can go and pick additional um, uh, variables. I, it ranges from the demographics. Is, this should be very familiar to you guys because it's from the domains in the data model. Uh, from here, and if I wanted to pick some additional ones, I can. And as soon as you do, it appears on here. And then the the statistics. This came from a very specific use case that our users wanted. Um, you know, we had. Initially, what's known as a long view, which essentially is the EAV view, where all the data points were in the same column, more or less. You know, you had a column for identifier, you had a column for the type of variable, you had a column for time, and then you had a column for the value for that variable. So it extended very far vertically. And for a subset of our users, uh, arguably a little bit more advanced, they would be able to take that, load it into whatever statistical software they wanted to use and do their custom analysis. Something that to keep in mind about our users, they were used to doing a lot of these things externally. Uh, I, we realize that it's gonna take some time for them to see the value of all the custom built tools in Atlas already. So in the meantime, we wanted to be able to make sure they had this extract functionality to do their own analytics on their own pipelines. But one thing that they did ask for is what we call internally as a wide view. And this is for those users that wanted to see all of their patient data, but summarized more or less as one row per patient. So as you can imagine, when you add more and more variables, you're extending it uh, to the right. And, you know, more or less, uh, anytime you add a new variable, it keeps adding a column and, and keeps going and going. And then when you have things like blood pressure, um, which might might appear many, many times for a patient, we had to limit the t amount of columns that get created. So then that's why we have things like first, you know, however many and last, however many. So as you can imagine, I want to see the first five blood pressures or the last five, as well as your lowest blood pressure or your highest blood pressure, et cetera. And what this does is um, you go through this process of starting the export, we have a data quality report that is run that shows information about the quality of your data. Um, one thing that we realized during the symposium, uh, there was a little bit of miscommunication on our part. We are uploading uh, our data every day, so it's an incremental upload. So um, there's, you know, we, we try to keep it at least a day behind. So that means there might be some situations where data is uh, a user needs to be told why there's some, some data points that uh, might might be there, might not be there. So that's why this data quality report was included. And then from here, they can go ahead and go through the process of, of signing off on their data use agreement, which is on the next screen. And then you would get something that looks like this. So as you, this is the wide view, as I said, it shows uh, from where each patient entered and left the cohort. And then, like I pointed out earlier, every new variable appears as a new column, and it just keeps going and going depending on how many variables you asked for. And then, as you can imagine, you know, some some patients don't have a third blood pressure. So the, those are why you would see missing uh, fields here. And it just goes and goes. And this is the wide view. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention because I'm running out of time is we had to integrate with our IRB. Essentially, it's in integrated to our IRB system so a user can search for their IRB, and we only allow them to add IRBs that they're authorized on. So that's the double check that's taking place behind the scenes. So that's it for me. I really appreciate the time, and I'm looking forward to any follow-ups and, and really looking forward to the deeper dive on the workgroup call. Thank you.